Hi, um, welcome. Uh, welcome back if you've been here before. I am Lilliputian Hitcher and welcome to my book club. So let's talk about my recent journey into the search for great horror novels. So here's the backstory to this. 2020 and the pandemic hit. I needed to basically find something to do with my free time because for a majority of this period, I was in lockdown. And this also meant that a lot of my other hobbies were inaccessible due to the fact that I couldn't go out and so what I started doing was reading a lot more. A little backstory about me. I love reading, but it's always been really difficult for me. I have a processing disorder. It takes a little bit longer for like anything written in text form to process into my mind. And so this has made me a slow reader. I enjoy reading still, but I used to get really, really frustrated because it would take me a really long time to finish a book. Anyways, pandemic hits and so I was like this is the perfect time to kind of train my brain to enjoy reading again and so that's what I did I started reading during the uni break of that year which is about a month long I gave myself a goal of finishing just a just one book just to give it a go and I <laughs> picked the heavyweight so I basically was like I've always wanted to read this book, so I'm gonna try. And it is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielski. Funny story, in that same period during the pandemic, I also got really into rewatching some old online series, specifically the um, series centered around the Slenderverse. I was really, really, really into Marble Hornets when it was first coming out in like 2009, 2010. And I wanted to kind of revisit that whole genre of like online storytelling. I didn't go back to Marble Hornets. This time I picked something else from the Slenderverse called Everyman Hybrid. The thing with Everyman Hybrid is it's also better than the Marble Hornets. But the thing with Everyman Hybrid is you can tell it's heavily influenced by this book. And so I was like, I need to read that book. I sat outside basically every single day for that holiday period and just read. I finished it in a month. Amazing, incredible feat on my part. And I loved it. I loved this book. It's like, it's incredible. I've never found anything quite like it. Without spoiling the story, there are two narratives in this book. So the first narrative is a guy writing a research paper. Technically there's three narratives. A guy writing a research paper on a piece of scientific footage recorded inside this house that could create like a whole new house inside of it. It's it's one of those like eighth wonder, uh, you know, wonders of the world kind of marvels. If you've read the book, I'm doing a horrible job of explaining it, I know. So the first narrative is obviously the research paper written about this, which also details what happens in the video, which is kind of like a story inside a story. And then on top of that, you have journal entries of a guy who found the research papers writing about, you know, whatever you write in a journal, plus his notes about the research paper. So there's like a story on top of a story on top of a story. It acts like its own little ARG inside of a book, essentially. I would highly recommend this book to anyone who enjoys like complicated fiction, for lack of a better word. It's a good horror read, obviously. Anyone who likes ARGs, highly recommend this. So the problem I had after I finished House of Leaves was that it is a really unique book. So there isn't really anything quite like it out there. Obviously, Mark Z. Danielski has other titles. They're very expensive and difficult to order into Australia. So they are on my list when I can afford it, which is not right now. <laughs> so basically, I just started looking online for lists of really good horror novels because up until that point, the only horror novels I had really read were Stephen King and Respect Where Respect's Due. I love Stephen King. I'm, I have a Stephen King collection because, you know, he is the king of the genre. <laughs> the issue with Stephen King novels is they are very formulaic. When you buy a Stephen King novel, you kind of know what you're going to get. And I wanted different stuff. I wanted like unique stories. So I started like researching. So the next book I read was Ring by Koji Suzuki. This is the novel that went on to uh, be adapted into Ringu, 
or The Ring in the American remake. The book trumps both of those movies a billion times. It is so good. It's written very like matter of factly, very simply, but it's also written in a way because obviously you've got the seven days. So this this entire story fits into that seven day period. It feels like a race when you're reading it like it feels like exhilarating almost i don't even know how to explain it if you don't know the story of the ring this book does differ in certain aspects of the story that the movies kind of went off on their own thing with it's very different in that sense so you won't be reading the same story that you've seen in the movies it focuses around a reporter and his friend who comes into the possession of the um esteemed tape <laughs> that you watch and yeah it's like their journey to stop themselves from being killed and solve the mystery of the tape and they eventually do and honestly there are so many parts of the story that are like I can't even put into words how much better the book is compared to the movies like there are parts in the story that are like so amazingly written like what you see on the tape it's so different and so much scarier the reason the tape exists is far better explained in the novel than it is in the movies. I don't think they really elaborate on it very much at all in the movies for some reason. Every like loose end that the movies don't tie up is tied up in this book and it's fantastic and I highly recommend it. So there are sequels to Ring, Loop and Spiral. I have not read those yet and so the next book I thought maybe let's go back to a classic and see if it holds up. So what I read was Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Fantastic. All of the books I've included so far, I'm going to say they're fantastic because I don't finish books I don't enjoy. I read this in like two weeks, which might not sound like a huge thing to someone who has competent reading skills. But for me, two weeks is like I sped through this thing. You might notice that all these little post-it notes here. This book is extremely gay. There is so much like queer undertones in this book. And to be honest, I was kind of shocked that it doesn't really get talked about very often, especially given like the popularity of the Netflix TV series. I was like, why is no one talking about how gay the original book was? And so when I was reading it, I didn't know that there was going to be a lot of gayness in this story. And I started just... You know, I just started putting sticky notes every time a very queer interaction occurred or there was like heavily implied queerness. And as you can see, I have a lot of post-it notes there. You probably know the story of Haunting of Hill House. It's a haunted house and a bunch of spiritually connected people go to this house to investigate supernatural activity essentially and then lots of gay things happen. Really, really good. So it's definitely a more traditional haunting story quite obviously because like this is one of the first so of course it's got to be a traditional haunting story so after that I kind of wanted to try a more indie title I just kind of want to get a feel for like who is currently writing in the horror genre so the next book I read was Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach weird story about how I heard about this was that it actually originated as a few entries on the no sleep reddit which is a Reddit where people post what is essentially creepypastas. And I heard it for the first time on the No Sleep podcast. And so I was kind of blown away that the fact that a book that originated on a podcast that basically told creepypastas, this was so good. And it's good in the way that it's unique in its storytelling. It's a non-linear story that tells of a guy reaccounting memories from his childhood. So it is very scattered because he's kind of putting pieces together about something that had happened to him in his childhood that his mother never really spoke to him about and that he just kind of repressed. So it goes through this like non-linear retelling of basically what he can remember at the time. So each chapter is a different phase or a different point in time. It's again, incredible, really good. I loved it. The final chapter got me really emotionally. I highly recommend this. After that, I actually found the next book in a really weird roundabout way. Essentially, I saw a Twitter thread talking about an artist who paints these very like grotesque, but like realism-esque or like even like impressionist-esque styles. And as I was going through the replies to look at more of the paintings, someone was like, oh, she actually painted something for the cover of this book. 
Um, I don't have the book with me right now because I lent it to a friend, but I'll put it here on the screen. It's called Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca, Eric LaRocha, LaRocca. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. It's a novella, uh, so it's a short story. And it's body horror. And I was kind of shocked because body horror is not something I thought I would enjoy reading because when it comes to horror movies, I definitely far more enjoy psychological or supernatural horror more than your like saw or ultra gore or like extreme horror that's not an absolute rule there are movies I make exceptions for but I don't generally like gross things and this book is very gross but like in a way <laughs> like it doesn't gross you out or maybe it does gross you out but it's still entertaining enough to keep reading so the story is like a series of interactions in either like email form or in like an aim chat kind of style form between these two women who meet through like a classifieds ad and then form like a sub and dom kind of relationship with one another and the further it progresses the more sadistic the requests of the dom gets. I won't say much more because the way it ends is like so disgusting but really good and I highly recommend it and that was like his first big published title um he won awards for it and so I kind of became a fan just from that one story and so what I read next was his next release um you've lost a lot of blood very different from things have gotten worse there is still body horror elements to it but not in the same vein. This is similar to say House of Leaves where there's a story inside a story, definitely not as gross. There is some grossness. It's more in the vein of like, have you seen like Tetsuo? It's like a Japanese horror movie where a man like just starts attaching like pieces of metal to his body and augmenting his body and stuff. Um, it's, it's similar to that kind of gore. It's editing me here. I realize that I never described the story of You've Lost a Little Blood to keep it vague it's a story inside a story so the outer story is like these two lovers they're on essentially a killing spree i won't say more than that because you should read it for yourself um the story inside the story is a novel written by one of the two it's about a video game designer going to stay at this really strange estate and work on a video game and it's really good i hope that helps this was another one I read really quickly. I like basically got it in the mail and stopped what I was reading at the time to read this because I just really wanted to read it. I have ordered their next title and I will be ordering their next title after that because I've just announced another new novel on top of the one that I've already pre-ordered. Huge fan, love their work. Okay, so this is one that I literally just finished this week. This book, I have so many thoughts about it because it was hard to read and not in the way that I was bored or like it took a lot of mental motivation to read it it was hard to read in like it's too well written it's too, like it's just it's fully immersive and I don't know how to like reconcile with it because the story was really good it's like you know in the top 100 novels of the century for a reason like it's really well written that's also why it's so hard to read because this book the Wasp Factory, by the way, by Ian Banks. Disturbing, macabre, grim, depressing, depraved, full of apathy. The only way I can describe this book, it's framed as like a coming of age story. I know it was a horror title when I bought it, obviously, but the character that narrates the entire story is so again, like very matter of fact, very straight to the point, very frank about that's funny because his name is Frank actually. Very just honest in the telling of the story and at times it just is like the lowest level of human depravity described in the story if that's something that entices you. Every time I would finish reading a chapter and I could only read a chapter at a time because I just couldn't emotionally take on more but I would read a chapter at a time and then just kind of sit there and feel like sickened a little bit. I finished it so there is a story in there that is like really really good and really like you just want to know how it ends. I will say I don't necessarily think the ending stuck the landing for what the rest of the book set up. It It's a big twist at the end 
and I was shocked I did not see it coming but I felt like there was a lot of just unanswered questions and maybe that's what the writer wanted sometimes you're not owed an entire story and you're not owed answers and you're not owed like everything wrapped up in a neat little bow and sometimes you just have to like accept that the world went on after this book ended that's why i'm trying to like <laughs> not judge the ending so much because that is basically i think the frame of mind you're meant to have very just a lot very full-on so those are currently the books I've read up to this date and finished. There are a few titles I didn't finish. One of them was on this repeatedly on lists of like greatest horror novels ever written. I call bullshit because I read to the halfway point and that's my personal rule with books is if I get to the halfway point and I'm not enjoying myself and I find the story to be a chore to read, give it up and move on. It is Ghost Story by Peter Straub. This is constantly on top horror novel lists. I found it so unbelievably boring. Not only that, you can like practically feel the fact that the author is an old man when you're reading it because he goes on like an old man. There are like far too many background characters introduced that you're expected to remember all their names because they're constantly like referenced in just casual conversation or in like random parts of the story. So like you're expected to remember this back catalogue of like every person that lives in this town and then you've also got the four main characters in the story technically there's just the one main character and then like his friends who are like secondary characters but the characters are old men as well um the writer is an old man it just was so painfully boring there was like maybe two scenes i guess in the story that were like had the bones of being scary but didn't quite fully deliver and I gave up at the halfway point. I just couldn't do it. I actually like remember every time I'd pick up the book to start reading, I would complain <laughs> like it was a job that I had to do. Like, oh, I have to go read my book now. So I was like, fuck this, I'm, I'm bailing, this book sucks. So, sorry Peter Straub, like your book was boring. Um, I will have a few honorable mentions. Koji Suzuki who wrote Ring also has an anthology book called Dark Water. You may recognize the title Dark Water from the movie Dark Water, which is like eerily similar to the Elisa Lam case, that woman who had like the weird elevator footage and then she disappeared and then she wound up dead and everyone was like, this is so eerily similar to the movie. Well, before the movie, there was the short story and the short story came out in 1996. So that just makes it even weirder, I think. I don't tend to sit down and read a collection of short stories from cover to cover like I would with a regular novel. I will just pick up and read short stories here and there if I'm just wanting a quick read. So I've read like two of the stories in here, Dark Water being one of them. And I also want to shout out this one. This is also a collection of short stories, Songs of a Dead Dreamer in Grimscribe by Thomas Ligotti. I've read one of the short stories in here so far. It was pretty good. The The one short story I read in here was very like the type of story you've heard before, an urban legend or like a story that a friend told you. Like it's it's got that kind of feel to it. So I do plan to read more. That brings me to what I'm currently reading. I haven't actually started it, but what I'm going to read, which is Apartment 16 by Adam Neville. You might know the name or you might not, but if you do know the name, there is a movie called The Ritual on Netflix. It is a great horror movie. It's like one of my favorite like modern horrors. He wrote the novel of The Ritual. Um, this is another title which I had read is better than The Ritual. And I love a classic haunted hotel story like 1408 or real life stuff that happens in hotels as mentioned, the Elisa Lam case and Dark Water. I love a good haunted hotel story. So I can't wait to start reading this. That's the book club update so far. I have made a separate chat in my Discord server uh, where we can talk books. If you ever wanted to become a patron, if you wanted to chat books, tell me what you're reading. Tell me what your favorite horror novels are because I'm always adding to the list. Currently, this is my <laughs> list. I'm not good at using Goodreads, so I haven't saved everything on there. I just write it all down. But that's my list so far. So if you want any more suggestions of what to read, you can either pause and zoom in or I can post it somewhere if you want to read it. So thank you for joining me for the first official Lilliputian Hitcher book club meeting.
if you've watched all the way to the end, thanks. Comment Ghost Story by Peter Straub sucks in the comments if you've made it all the way here. Do it. I'm serious. So thank you and I'll see you again if you decide to come back. Do all the things that the YouTubers tell you to do. Like, subscribe, comment, join the Patreon, uh, press the bell. I'm not telling you to do that though. That is of your own volition. But I would appreciate if you did do it. So thank you and... Goodbye.